Kai Rubin from Ron Drum Channel. Once again, a great lesson about Mr. Steve Gadd. Today we're gonna do the five, five greatest drum fills of Mr. Steve Gadd. And at the end, there's a bonus with this fill he uses the most. Stay tuned and please like and subscribe my videos and give it a thumb up or leave a comment which fill you wanna learn. I will answer everything. And if you leave a comment and a thumb up, the algorithm's gonna be higher and more people can see my videos. So also like and subscribe, do everything you want. And we start with fill number one six strokes and it calls the six stroke roll fill and he uses a lot of fills out of the rudimental thing original six stroke is one sixty note a double and a double and a sixty note again one e and a two e and a one e sticking is right left left right right left you see it here and Mr. Get does a little bit a different twist on it. He plays them in an equal value of 60 note triplets. The sticking is, sticking is the same, but it sounds like this. And the single notes he plays on the toms. Watch the articulation and the dynamics. So the single notes you really have to play in the middle and the center at the sweet spot. So you can check out my other lessons about that. And the notes on the snare are really soft taps that makes it very hard. You start with the right hand on the snare. He also uses it a lot in drum solos. Then he plays it on the snare as the original six stroke roll. And he doubles the bass from with the accented single notes. Especially the left hand accent and the right hand foot. Don't flam there. This is the third variation where he plays two bass drums instead of two right hands. Most of the time he used this in a single beat phrasing. And the four variations, he skips the first part and only start with the two fast bass drums. The most famous fill Steve Gadd plays, it's the triplet fill. And it's a very common fill already existed. He didn't invent this himself. John Bonham plays this, all the jazz drummers did it. It's a triplet divided with two snare drums and one bass drum. So a lot of times the mortals play it right left bass. A lot of fills, Steve Gadd starts with the downbeat on the bass drum. That's really important. The downbeat is on the bass drum. So he started fill with the bass drum. But then the sticking is not bass drum right left, but bass drum left right. And that is so hard. And I think he does this because of the articulation. You articulate much better. at the ending of his drum solo he plays very fast this pattern and it's so hard to 
really articulate well every hit has to be there you know that's so hard and it has to be really triplet i think it's one of the hardest fills steve get plays and there's one trick he uses a lot the rhythmic world has two parts part one that's the binary world. So we play everything divided in two. So that's straight eight, 60 note, 30 second note. And the feel is really, we call that straight. <laughs> the binary world really coming out of the Europe classical tradition like the other world is the ternary world everything is divided in three that's the world of three that's coming out of africa the tunes cats and that became jazz music so that's also tenary or the blues. So what Steve Gadd does in his playing is that he combines that a lot. So every fill he almost can play tenary and binary. So this triplet thing is really tenary. But he has also a binary variation. And then we do actually the same with the downbeat on the bass drum, but we instead of two notes. We play in between three notes, so then is our 30 seconds note. And that is bass, right, left, right. Bass, right, left, right. Bass room really plays on the downbeat. Very hard to play. So at the end of the solos, he always ends with the triplet thing or with this 30 second note thing. It's the same concept, the same idea, but a different phrasing and a different feel. Really tight, articulated, and dynamic in between. The Red MQ fill, also in the Aja drum solo. So what's the Red MQ? It's again a rudiment. Again, Steve Getz changes it a little bit and makes it again even 60 note triplets in the same value. So that first note, he makes it a bass drum. And the last one is also a bass drum. And then again, that great revoicing on the toms. It's really hard to play a lot of fills. He starts with the bass drum and then two left hands. And then you really have to build your technique. And then the articulation. So the, the left hands are taps and the toms are again the accents. Also, there's a little add on it. A downbeat on the bass drum, he combines it with a downbeat on the hi-hat, a heel on the hi-hat. You get that splash sound Tony Williams uses a lot. You do this with your heel, you really your heel. Start with your right hand, not with the bass, but with the right hand. as a single phrase mm -hmm. so you can rephrase it or add a double left hand on it mm -hmm. 
for fill in, it's also a concept Steve Gadd developed a little bit. It's about a group of three in 60 notes. Polyrhythmic can play straight 60 notes in the single stroke version. Fill number one, my favorite fill. Also make sticking out of three notes and play that in a 60 note figure. And the sticking is right, left, left. But that is not even 60 notes if you continue. Somewhere you get on the downbeat again. So you really have to listen and please don't start to calculate. A lot of people think, okay, I play three, four groups of three and then I play one group of four and I have 60. No, you have to play it by ear. It's music. 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 And again, the right hand has the accent and the left hand has the small, tiny taps. And that is so hard to do. A lot of my students play. This is really the articulation is. That's the most important melody in it. And this is are the ghost notes. The trick Steve Gadd uses a lot is re-emplacement. And there's a new book coming and it's filled with re-emplacement. Every phrasing he plays, he can re-emplace it on different parts of the measure. And that's really genius. You have to really feel the time there. But he plays it one sixteen later. He starts on the second sixteen note. So then it, we have one. One E and a three E and a three E and a four E and a You can also start with the bass room on the one. Further, you start on the first eight note, one and Try to make musical sentences with it, you know, so fool around with it, don't play like, you know, really. That's the secret, I tell you all the secrets. He also has another thing in it, he plays this a lot in jazz music, it's a little variation again, he plays right, left, left bass. Then it's a group of four again. But if you play that out of a ternary beat in 16 notes, he does that a lot in jazz music. Also use this a lot like this. Mm -hmm. The flutter lick. There are a lot of lessons about the flutter lick, so I keep it short. A rudimental thing. It's inverted double. We have a double. The double starts on the downbeat. Invert the double, the downbeat is on the second hand of the double. One and. Or you start with one single. So instead of. So that's the basic idea of the flutter lick. Your right hand on the hi hat and your left hand on the snare. You start with the snare instead of the hi-hat. You 
see that this movement is not so comfortable. So he replaced that one right hand with a bass drum before you go to the backbeat. So you do it with the less bass drum. And you start instead of one right hand with the bass drum. So again, we have that very difficult left hand taps and we have a double 60 note bass drum figure or 30 second note bass drum figure that is really without any context with no right hand lead or something. It's only the bass drum. That's really hard to get that tight. The most amazing song he uses this is Ricky Lee Jones. Chucky is in love. And I have a lesson also of this song, so I explain it more clearly. But the nice thing, it's a ternary song. It's a shovel, a halftime shovel. Like this. And there's this, uh, a, f a C part. Goes a little bit like a jazz thing, you know. And it leaves an open space, an open ending. And then the drums has to bring back the groove to start the second part of the song with a fill in. It's a ternary thing. So a lot of drummers will play a ternary thing. And he started this with that 13 second note straight binary thing. Digga 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 da. Digga 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 da. And then he plays that fluttle in. He has a ternary way of playing this, and that's really nice. It's out of a paradiddle diddle, and a paradiddle diddle is right, left, right, right, left, left. Again, a rudiment. I play your right hand on the hi hat and your left hand on the snare. can replace one bass drum, one left hand with the bass drum. So that's the ternary flutter lick. And actually this sticking bass left right right left bass in 60 note triplets It's also a tom thing he uses in drum solos. He used that in the drum solo on the Up Close video, the famous solo. It's also in the Roof Garden video on the Roof Garden song. There are monumental breaks in the Roof Garden song and one of them is this 60 note triplet figure. You have the same thing with actually a double left hand or a single left hand. Binaries. Ternaries. But again, the same concept and the same kind of phrasing, the same kind of sound, you know, the same kind of melody. And it's so nice. That's the secret to play something ternary and something binary. Oh man, that's so hip. So, uh, so, uh, so, we, so, we. He also has a variation on that flutter lick, and that's a really nice phrasing. I think you recognize when I play it. It's again in this great up close book. There are a lot of more phrasings. He has so much phrasings in it, but he plays that paradiddle, paradiddle exercise. Mm. And it's the same concept, it's again, but instead of, it's, so the one left hand, you have not a bass drum, but you kick your hi-hat. 
and the rest are doubles. So you really use your both your feet, it's, it's amazing. And then on that great performance on Silgen Day 1984, it's even harder. He plays it not with on the snare, but he plays it like a rim click. And again, the articulation is amazing. It's dynamically, you have to really have to listen what he plays. And then he plays a loop, a continuous loop. I cannot play that. <laughs> he plays it big. The paradiddle, the paradiddle thing, the paradiddle king, the paradiddle god. Steve Gadd is paradiddle. You know, if you say paradiddle, you say Steve Gadd. If you say Steve Gadd, you say paradiddle. It's amazing. What he does creatively with the paradiddle, it's, it's out of your mind. It's so incredible. Nobody found these gaps in the paradiddle world. It's a, it's a rudiment again. So it's right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. You can use that already in a very musical way. If you play just a normal 60 note fill in. If you make that a paradiddle thing, you get already a completely different phrasing. Uses it also a lot in his beats, but I have another video about his drum beats. So, mm, 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 mm. The nice thing about this paradiddle that there are inversions. So you hustle the, the, the paradiddle a little bit. I can explain you that in other videos. But you play right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left. So you get a different, different phrasing. combine them so you can play the right left right right and then left right right left also uses it a lot like this sticking so his left hand on his hi hat Really famous phrasing, he uses it a lot. Also in the coda of the Paul Simon A's in the whole drum ending. <laughs> Alright, I promised you at the end as a bonus, what is the fill-in Steve Gadd uses the most? And I think I have so many records of Steve Gadd on every record he plays this fill. And what's nice about it, it's actually a very small fill, but it is the most beautiful fill around. Yeah. It's a variation on the number one drum fill around, is this one. That's the number one drum fill everybody uses. You know... Fills don't play the bills, grooves, that makes you the frills, because that's the secret. But 
he makes a variation. He starts this with a five stroke. <laughs> Thanks for watching again and uh, please leave that comment and give it a thumb up because that's great for the algorithms and a lot of people see this on their video recommendation thing coming up then. So we have a bigger audience for Steve Get then and please like and subscribe this video also. I have a great Facebook page to the Steve Get drum lesson group on Facebook. And there are all the fills and you can leave comments there and ask me questions. I will answer all the questions. So see you next time and bye bye.